Now, this is one of the most very uh, difficult issues to resolve in Nigeria. And, of course, if you watched the program yesterday, we spoke with Andrew Nevin, a partner and uh, chief economist at PwC in Nigeria, about the issue of land in Nigeria, uh, in the country. That's what's called the land matters. Uh, on the same day, in the morning, the country's vice president, Professor Yemi Oshibajo, uh, spoke at the land reform uh, conference in Abuja and says the uh, land reform should be used as a catalyst for abundance, lasting prosperity. Uh, he says that building consensus around necessity for land reform is easy. Yes, it's easy to form a consensus around uh, the reform. But the vice president went on to say, but exactly what these reforms should be and how best to proceed in implementing them has always been more complicated. Yet, in, in more in the important part. That's part of what uh, the uh, uh, the vice president says. Of course, Nigeria is still battling to resolve the Land Use Act of 1976, as, and we're still uh, trying to uh, reform that particular act. The vice president went on to state that the role of the state or the government as the primary guarantor and enforcer of the integrity of land and property rights that are created from it is indisputable. Simple. The government or the state still has the primary responsibility as the guarantor and the person in charge of land matters. But the vice president added what you see now on your TV. He said, however, at any point when the administration of land no longer meets the aspirations, it becomes incumbent upon the state, that is the government, to take the lead in initiating and overseeing some form of improvement or reform to the land system, even if that reform is one that will ultimately end in less state control over land. That is just opening the way for the fact that the Nigerian government uh, thinks that if the time arrives for it to do less uh, in terms of land, or let the private sector take the lead. Uh, the vice president says uh, the government will consider that and move aside, step aside, and let the private sector uh, take the lead. That's as far as the land matter is concerned. What about the marketplace? We had the first positive reading on our stock market over the last 12 sessions. It's been a blistering sell-off in the Nigerian market, or what to call it, sell-down. Technically the same thing. Uh, but this is how we finished off on Monday to start the first Monday and the first business week or trading week in the new month. So we got 0.37. Is the market now ready to turn a new leaf? We have a few questions on this as we move on. 36,947 was the index reading at uh, the closing bell. Equity cap, 13.383 uh, trillion. Just a few billions were added to the total market numbers on Monday. This is how your primary indicators look like, does it? 314.42. That's about uh, almost 40% uh, lower than the last trading numbers for uh, May, which was or the, or the, uh, the, the first, the last trading day, which was Friday, and yesterday was the first trading day. So that volume was lower by nearly 40%. In Naira value, 7.03 billion. In dollar value, that's about 19.37 million US dollars in 2016. So that was quite a bit of aggressive bagging hunting on Monday. Uh, where did that come from when we're looking at uh, 0 0.37 and uh, year to date uh, negative? A reading a slightly shaped to 3.39 percent. How do you get it? The banking sector made a comeback, 1.60 percent. Uh, GT Bank added 4.46 percent to that. Zenit Bank added 1.96 percent to that uh, reading. And in terms of a turnover, those two banks also pulled uh, a very lion share of what we saw in net transaction value. The total shares traded on GT Bank was about 7.4 million US dollars. Uh, Zenit Bank went with about 1 million. Between, both of, between the two of them, that's about close to 9 million US dollars out of the 19.37 uh, million market turnover. If you look at the consumer goods, the numbers still tepid, 0.02% negative. But of course, we got Nigerian breweries, very strong investors buying 3 million US dollars. And Nestle, another food giant, uh, 2.3 million US dollars. That sector are finishing the red. Then you look at industrial goods where Dangote Cement and Lafarge Africa tried to play the things out. Negative 1.12%. 
Dankote Cement, 2.2 million shares of that stock were traded on Monday. Lafarge Africa lost 2.65% to drag that sector uh, to red uh, territory. Then we go to insurance, where you find about 0.9% uh, negative reading. Law Union and Rock was 4.42% in negative uh, territory. And oil and gas made a very gentle comeback, like the banks, 0.33%. How did we get that 0.33% in the oil and gas? There you have it. Those are the uh, listed oil and gas stocks. Corn oil, uh, 31.80. Market still digesting these retailers. A two naira per share dividend declared for the full year 2017. Uh, numbers which came out in the news yesterday. Uh, double one peers of the mobile uh, added about 0.91%. Owando lost. Uh, almost 9%, as you can see at the bottom of the page. This is now at 10, uh, market closing, about 7 million uh, ordinary shares. Flip that over. Look at Total, and the bell weather in that space was uh, in, in positive territory, about 0.15%. Uh, and a very small, less than 50,000 uh, volume. Strong volume in Eterna Oil, a very small cap, but the price was up 4.87%. And Japan is seeing some green shoot after the market or investors clobbered that oil maritime company, services company, uh, for that may lost mystery, that, uh, that uh, private equity that, didn't, that failed to materialize, 350 million US dollars. Uh, Japan went down to 0 uh, 22 copper now, is back, uh, it's, it's now rising about 24 copper per share, 9.09. Uh, percent. So we find a very decent day in the oil and gas space. And those were uh, the laggards among them. Capital Oil and Rack Unit 2, two small retailers still hanging in there on the counters. Let's go to the unlisted securities market. It's still very bearish. Yes, we, have some, we had some trading, as it were, but the key uh, indicators remain largely unchanged. The USI, which you call the unlisted securities index, remain unchanged at 68.83. You can see that hanging in there. And the market cap at 452. Then you look at the volume, 132,000 uh, transactions on Monday. Now we're going to finish off the market round at FMDQ OTC Securities Exchange, where the central bank yesterday sold fresh uh, uh, treasury bills uh, at the marketplace and tried to mop up really a little bit of liquidity. But the secondary trading is really, was really, really aggressive. That's the treasury bills for you. You can see 9.9% uh, discount high on bills maturing 28th of June. That's coming through in about uh, three weeks. Uh, time. That's a record. That's a very uh, decent 192, nearly 200 billion naira. Of course, it was bearish with the FGN uh, bonds where yields expand a little bit, well, about 12 basis points to about 13.27%. We'll get around some of these conversations uh, later on the program uh, for you. So let's, uh, let's leave it there. We'll talk more about the markets. What's there for us in June as we look at green bonds joining the market street from this week. Let's continue this conversation after the break, but of course we're going to touch on commodities. Now you can drink and smoke your way to a new higher tariff. That's what the administration wants. Cut back on what you can term, well, some more not good behavior uh, by taxing you more for those alcohol and cigarettes that you drink and what you smoke.